Hello, everyone. Just wanted to welcome you. We're going to get started in a few moments, but while we wait, why don't you just type in the chat where you're from? We'd love to know where you are. I think the most I've had in the last year or two on webinars is four different countries. Trying to beat that. Hmm. Don't be shy, folks. We're going to be using this chat box a little bit today. Someone from Paso Robles, California. Nice. Why can't I see the chat? That is weird. Are you in the chat or Q&A? Uh, chat. Go to the Q&A. Oh, I see it. I see it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. California, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Brooklyn. I've been to all those states so far. <laughs> Robin from Baltimore, welcome. Tampa, Florida, I'd like to be there right now. It's rainy in North Carolina right now, cold. It's rainy in New York too. Yeah, there's some kind of a super storm that went through. I think it hit a little bit west of us, but we got some high winds last night and we're getting rain today. Well, it looks like it's raining everywhere. <laughs> if you just joined us, we're asking folks in a chat where you're from bunch of different cities so far just the US Istanbul two countries woohoo <laughs> three Montreal two more and I can beat my record <laughs> all right we're gonna wait two more minutes and then we'll start Who's new to email marketing? And uh, if not, you know, how much experience do you have? Kind of gauges what I should really talk about today too. Chicago, I think that came up twice. Yeah, I'll be in Chicago at the end of the month for the American Marketing Association Leadership Summit. I'm looking forward to getting some good pizza. We also have someone from the UK where it snowed. Ooh, so that's four, right? Tied. Oh, York, UK. Okay, I think I might have misread that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new to email marketing. All right, JP, we're going to give you some great inspiration and education today. Dare I say that? Some. So this looks like a perfect audience for this for this content, but I can always adapt it. So. Joseph, really interesting. Uh, hopefully we can turn that around for you and get you some business with email marketing today. All righty, everyone. Hello, welcome to today's webinar um, on why email marketing is a worthy investment plus three ways to improve your ROI. I'm Heather Frederick, your webinar host from Main Street ROI. We're gonna go ahead and get started. For today's webinar, we're excited to welcome Hancock Meyer, Senior Manager of Client Services at iContact. And just some little housekeeping things. The presentation will be about 40 to 45 minutes so that we can leave plenty of time at the end for a live Q&A session. So feel free to type any questions you have in the Q&A box along the way through the presentation, and then we'll get back to all of them at the end of the webinar. 
And as always, today's webinar will be recorded and we'll send out a replay video along with the PDF of the slides so that everyone who has signed up will get it. Um, so, you know, if you get calls or you get pulled away or anything because of work, don't worry, you're not going to miss anything. Um, and yeah, with that, I shall turn it over to Hank so that he can get started. Thank you, Heather. It's great to be here. Glad to got to know where everybody's from. It's always good to hear where people are and where they're living, maybe somewhere I want to visit. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever won a trophy or an award? It feels good when you do, right? When you win something or you do something as challenging and you have the end result. I warmed you up by introducing you to the Q&A or the chat. Go ahead in there, let us know. Be proud if you've won an award or got an MVP trophy or something like that. 12 years ago, I started at Eye Contact. Can't believe I've been at Eye Contact for 12 years. But the first year I was there, I won an award and I still have it. It's this heavy crystal award for account management excellence. I feel like I can kill somebody with this thing. It's so heavy, but I keep it up on my shelf just as a reminder of the good things that I've done because I've never really been good at sports. I tried soccer, I tried football. I just couldn't get the grasp of it. I'm technical by nature. I'm a data nerd. I'm a marketing nerd. That's why I don't fit into the sports world. But the sports world has MVPs, right? Those are the people that do really excellent things in their job, whether it's football, basketball, or whatever. Well, in marketing, email marketing is the MVP of the whole marketing field or industry, whatever you want to call it. Year after year, email marketing wins the MVP trophy because of the great ROI you're going to have. My name is Hank Hoffmeyer. I'm the digital marketing infotainer. I like to make marketing fun and successful, but I'm gonna let you be the judge of that today. I'm also the senior manager of client solutions for iContact, an email marketing platform. Uh, so if you wanna learn more about them, go to iContact.com. And I'm on all the socials, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, follow me wherever you want at Hank Hoffmeyer, you can Google my name. I take up like two or three pages because I have a unique name. Follow me. The only thing I ask is if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, I probably will reply to you asking to have a call with you because I have this weird rule where I like to talk to people before I connect with them. I wanna to get to know you and learn how I can help you. Email marketing is not only the MVP, but it's also a team player. And you've been a team player so far by being active in the chat. Let's look at some numbers when it comes to email marketing because I hear some of you either stop using it or you're new to it. Why is email marketing the MVP or why is it important? Well, it's 40 times more effective than other marketing channels like pay-per-click, social media, and even direct mail, which is making a comeback, folks. 61% of American workers say that email is an important aspect of what they do. They're in their inbox, meaning emails can be opened if you send emails to them and you may get some conversions. If you're B2B, you're also still going to have really great results because 83% of B2B marketers use email marketing and know how powerful it is. I threw some stats at you and you say, well, that's not me. I don't get those kind of results, but email marketing is so effective because 95% of online consumers, people who are looking to buy things or buy services use email. Think about it. You sign up for a social media platform, what's one of the first things they ask for? An email address. People still use email. 72% of consumers say that email marketing is their preferred method of communication with businesses they want to do, have a relationship or buy from, whatever you wanna call it. Hopefully this is hitting home because what I'm trying to tell you is that it works. Email marketing works as long as you're doing the right things and not just treating it as, oh my God, it's Friday afternoon, I need to get an email out, let me spend 10 minutes, slap something together and put it out. Don't fall into the trap of being a marketer and saying, I have great information that I wanna put out there and sell to people. You want to provide your subscribers with information that's helpful, valuable, and helps them meet their needs, not making them wanna buy from you. With me so far, hopefully you still are because we got a lot to get through. I'm gonna to try to go as quick as I can, not on purpose. I'm a fast talker and I'm passionate. So hopefully you're following through. 
there'll be so many different ways you can learn about email marketing, connect with me, I'd be happy to have a, a Zoom call with you or something, but this is supposed to be a little bit more inspirational and educational, but everybody has specific needs when it comes to email and Jane may have different needs than John. That's why it's hard for me to go into specific examples, but we're gonna go over what you need to do today. You wanna start off right when it comes to email marketing. First three things we wanna talk about is sign up forms, welcome emails, and what content you're going to use. Let's hop right into forms. It's an excellent way to add subscribers because if you don't add subscribers, you don't have anybody to send emails to. Make sure when you create sign up forms, and we're gonna show you some examples that you adhere to your branding so that people know, especially if it's on like a landing page, they know who you are and they can trust you. One of the most important bits of information is only ask for what you need. In other words, let's say you sell shoes and I go to your website and you have a form. You ask me for my first name, last name, email address, date of birth, how much I paid in taxes last year, the color car I drive, and if I have homeowner's insurance or not. I probably will not fill out all that information. To start a relationship with an email subscriber, really the only thing you need is an email address. But I would implore you to also ask for the first name so that you could personalize your emails. In other words, you could take that first email, inject it into the subject line, inject it into the email as a greeting or even in the body to make it feel personalized. Email marketing is the only channel that you can send to a million people and make it feel like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can't do that on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You would have to create separate messages or use DMs to get that kind of personalization. Here's an example from ColourPop, a simple sign-up form asking for the email address at the bottom of the form here. If that's all they want, you can always ask for more information later. Bath and Body Works, they're adding a little level of, uh, not security, but basically I just wanna make sure that you didn't fat finger your email address. And I wanna make sure it's a real email address. So they're confirming your email address. Not only can you have a sign up form embedded on a page or on a landing page or on a website, you can use pop-ups. This is something that will pop up when I visit your website. But please give me time to look around your website to learn what you do if I don't know anything about you. It's nothing worse than going to a website and a pop-up comes up and says, get 20% off. I'm like, 20% off of what? I didn't really even learn about what you're offering yet. Maybe wait 20 seconds, or you can use a functionality when they scroll maybe 30, 40, 50% of your website, then the pop-up comes up. Trust me, your conversions will be a lot better. You can also use exit intent technology. This is when somebody goes to leave the browser, leave your website. They go to change tabs, close a tab, or shut down the browser that's when that pop-up comes up. I like this one the best because you give time for people to look around your website and you said, hey, wait, before you go, I'd love to give you a discount if you want to buy from us now. It kind of controls that narrative and makes them feel a little bit better about possibly buying from you. I told you to ask for first name and email address, but there are times or certain industries where you can actually ask for more information and more importantly, ask people what they want. Restaurants can get away with asking for your date of birth. Why is that? They offer either discount or free meals around your birthday. I don't know about you, but I love free food or a discounted meal. I just came back from uh, Texas and went to Big Bend National Park and we ate out a lot and I was looking for some deals. You'll notice that this restaurant's also asking what areas might you go to for their restaurant. Maybe if you live in New York, you're gonna choose the New York and uh, maybe every now and then you go to Florida and you're gonna check off the Miami check boxes there. Then we have Bangkok newsletter on the right hand side. They wanna know what kind of emails you want because they don't wanna send you something that's irrelevant. They ask you, hey, do you wanna learn about food in Bangkok? Maybe you just want our PDF magazine or you wanna learn about the nightlife. It's a great way to find out what your subscribers want. One thing that became popular more recently or in the last couple of years is QR codes. And this is just an example, it goes to our website. You don't have to bother scanning it, but you will have to scan something at the end for an offer I wanna give you for a specific guide. So that's kind of why I'm showing you this, but also saying when a pandemic hit, you noticed restaurants putting QR codes on tables so you can see menus, but this is a great way to have QR codes on slides like this, on a website, 
on a sticker if you're brick and mortar in your window. Let people scan the QR code to go back to your website or your sign up form to sign up for your newsletter. So I used QR code monkey to create that and actually put the logo in there. It's pretty cool. All right. You're gathering email addresses, you're collecting them, and you're feeling good about it. What's going to happen? What happens next? I mean, you've got this email address. What are you supposed to do? Well, you're going to start sending them emails and spamming them, right? You're just going to say, hey, you know what? I don't have an email to send out right now. I'll just wait till next month. But that's what you're going to do, right? You want to send a welcome email. I remember going to a very well-known sporting goods company and our store, and I saw on their window, sign up for our newsletter and get a 30% off coupon. I signed up right there on my phone, waited a minute, waited three minutes. I didn't get anything. Check my spam, wasn't my spam folder. I sat down on a bench outside the store and I waited for about 20 minutes. I wasn't just staring into space. I was looking at TikTok, Instagram, and trying to let the time pass. Thing is, I never got that email that day. I left that store, went to one of their competitors and bought the product that I needed just out of spite because I'm a marketer. I got the email three days later. Don't make false promises. Send a welcome email to help set expectations to tell people, thank you for signing up. I send an email about once a week, once a month. Here's what you can expect in the emails. And if you wanna unsubscribe, no hard feelings, here's the link. You can add your social links to the welcome email to say, hey, do you want to follow us on Facebook as well, on Instagram, whatever channels you might want to promote in that email. The most important thing, you want to send it right away. As soon as they sign up, or maybe you went to a conference and you had a table and you collected email addresses, add them as soon as you can so that they get that automated email. You can automate these welcome emails. You don't have to manually do that. You can attach uh, a list to an automation series and automatically send that welcome message. And it gives you an opportunity to ask to be whitelisted or add to their address book so your emails go to the inbox and you can include an offer in that welcome message. They signed up, and especially if you gave them an offer to sign up like a couple of the examples I've shown, you wanna make sure you provide that offer to them right away, not three days later. Welcome messages, why are they important? Why should you do it? It has a very high open rate, higher than most. I know somebody earlier said something about having low open rates. How would you like to have a 91% open rate? The majority of people open those welcome messages. That's the most crucial email you will ever send to new subscribers. 74% of consumers expect that welcome message. I fell into that 74%. Your click-through rate is going to be higher because they went to your website, you gave them time to look around, you let them opt in, you gave them the welcome message, they're probably gonna click through to learn more about you or maybe buy from you. And simply, they're more effective than any other type of newsletter you're going to send more than half. Here's some examples, one from Michaels. You're providing a 20% off coupon for signing up and it sets expectations. You know, Here's what you can expect from us. And a B2B example for my friends at Litmus that do rendering tests so you can see how your email looks in every type of inbox or every type of platform. They're kind of congratulating you. Woo, welcome to our newsletter. You are here, let's party. And they are gonna give you tips and they also wanna automatically give you a guide or a case study at the bottom where that button is. I love Surf Stitch. Uh, they're personalizing the welcome message. And they're also offering a coupon. And I just love how they have a huge hero image with text over it. Let's Otter. Here's otter.ai. They're being very playful here. And one thing they're doing is asking you to reply to that email and click on that link. Tell us how you plan to use Otter. So it gets you engaged with the brand. And it also shows engagement with the email which is very important to make sure your emails stay in the inbox folks all right let's move on to content the third item that you want to do right away when you start or when you revamp your email marketing campaigns before you send you want to make sure that people see your email this is what my email looks like every time i open it because i get so many emails it just really makes my eyes water and i'm not seeing what's going on the first thing people are going to see once their eyes kind of adjust to getting in front of their screen or on their phone is going to be the subject line. Here are some tips for your subject lines. Use personalization. Hey, Hank, we have a huge sale today. I don't know about you, but when people say my name, I like it. 
that that subject line is going to get my attention. Add some emoji makes you stand out in the inbox. Years ago, it used to be kind of risky to use emojis. Some people said it would make your email go to spam. Other people said that it's deceptive and actually works. Just use the right emojis. Your subject line should be about six to 10 words in length. Otherwise, it might get cut off in the inbox. We don't want that to happen because people might not really understand what you're saying if it gets cut off. There's a feature called A-B testing or split testing. You could take two versions of an email, take 10% of a list you want to send to, send one version, take another 10%, send another version. Simply, you can do a um, subject line test. Take one subject line and another subject line with the same copy, send it out to those 10% and then 10%. Whichever one has higher opens normally is the winner, and you would send the remaining 80% the winning email. A client of mine in the past said, I don't know why every marketer doesn't use split testing a lot because it's like getting free opens, which is true. You'll be sending the best performing email to your list, your large portion of your list. It's always a great tool to use. And when I talked about the length of your subject line, a pro tip here is a preview text. This is what shows up in the inbox next to the subject line. You see bold, then you see unbold right here in my example. The bold is your subject line. And I said you have six to 10 words. Well, you can extend that with the preheader or preview text. Marketers used to put, can't view this email? Click here to view online. To me, that's a waste because this is valuable real estate. Okay. More tips for your subject lines. Use action words or use words that will entice people to open up. Act now, save, limited time offer, you know, get the FOMO going, last chance, last chance to get your tickets, last chance to buy this product, last chance to sign up for my consulting. New video, people love videos. You publish a new video, let people know about that. They'll probably open that email. Learn how, find out why make people be intrigued and curious about what's in your email. But again, just don't be deceptive. Don't say free lottery ticket in this email and then don't give them a lottery ticket. I'd be disappointed. When it comes to subject lines, here are some open rates and how many people it was sent to. So you can see subject lines and you see some of these are very effective. Some of them had you know, open rates in the 90s, the 60s, the 70s. You might say, well, how do I get there? How do I get open rates like that from my subject lines. Well, at the end of today's session, I'm gonna give you the ultimate subject line guide for my contact, 501 examples of subject lines that worked and did not work. So bad examples and good examples broken down by industry as well as type of email. Stay tuned, we'll have that QR code for you soon. All right, when you send an email, think of the 60-40 rule. 60% of your email should be text, 40% images. Why you say, why should I do that, Hank? Because if you have an email that has heavy images, your email may go to spam. The algorithm looks at it and says, this might be spam because there's not enough text in here for us to scan and they're gonna send it to the spam folder. Use a variety of templates or formats for your emails. It's nothing worse than every Friday sending out an email that looks exactly the same, but only a little bit has changed causes fatigue, maybe have a couple different examples of templates that you can use, one newsletter style, one maybe with a little bit more images, but adhere to the 60-40 rule. Again, branding is important, especially when you're creating your emails. Use alt text for your images. When you place an image within an email, say an eye contact or any platform, you have the opportunity to put something called alt text. This is the text that shows if people don't load images. And there are people that don't load images. You might be one of them. What you can do is if you put your logo in there, don't put in logo, put in something a little bit more colorful. Put in say logo for the best sporting goods company on the planet or something like that. Make them want to enable images and see those images. And again, test, test, test. Not only test your subject lines, test your content as well. Test a long form text email versus one that has more images to see which one does better. Just be careful, don't test too many elements at once. Otherwise, you might not know what moved the needle or what did worse. When it comes to designing, keep your emails clean. Apple does a great job of letting the products and their pictures speak for themselves. If you're in the market for a laptop, you probably know who Apple is. 
they simply put a picture of their laptop pro uh their macbook pro here and they have a buy now button it's very simple and uses a lot of what we call white space creates a barrier or some room around all of the content makes it easier to read story it is using negative space we can't call it white space because none of it's white this is called negative space they're also using kind of black and white or gray tone images to kind of keep this email simple and easy to read as well as using emotional images or action images to entice you to click through back to their website if you have an email that's quite lengthy or long where you have a lot of products or services to wade through use something called the z pattern humans read from left and right to down or, or at least you know americans and most other countries some read downward but a majority of people read left to right and down use the z pattern to get people to go down your email and scroll if they're on the phone especially so you see the format there if you don't have a lot but you want them to read the whole email use the inverted pyramid you can have a large image and some text at the top then you have text that's a little bit more narrower and a button which is your cta or call to action even narrower at the bottom it automatically draws your eyes downward and gets people to look at your emails when you create your email bring it up on your monitor and do something called the squint test squint really hard and make your eyes blurry like I do when I first open my inbox, as I mentioned earlier, then compare that to what it is when you don't squint. If they look kind of similar and you can see where everything is placed and you can kind of make out what the content is, you pass the squint test. If for some reason everything looks so jumbled, you failed. You might want to go in and put some negative or white space in your emails. Humans are visual by nature. We love images and we love video even more. Make sure you're putting images and videos in your emails to get people to click through to what you're offering or to watch that video that you just created. Why video? Well, right now, 80% of marketing is video. And video has a 95% retention rate when it comes to content versus 10% in just text only. Email marketing, text, images, and video all go together in an email. It's great try it you'll see a lot of improvement in your engagement the most important thing to think about when you are creating content for your emails is offering value not what you want to send but what your recipient wants to receive i love to use the bank analogy what you can do is start creating your emails and you're going to start making deposits these are your valuable bits of information great images helpful videos you're making deposits and offering value i heard at least one of you then you can take a withdrawal this is where you ask for the sale this is where you say here's your coupon buy from us or or whatever it's a little bit more of a heavy sale just be careful that you make more deposits than withdrawals you don't want to overdraft your marketing account or your email marketing account if you have not picked up a copy of Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, same premise, mostly for social media, but it's a great read. It talks about value, 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 sell. Same thing, Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. I highly, highly recommend that book. All right, you're creating emails, you're sending emails, you're getting subscribers. Let's make sure your emails are delivered to the inbox. We're gonna get a little bit technical here, and I told you I was a nerd, data nerd. I'm gonna explain some things here and I'm gonna go into detail on it, so don't worry about it. But also just remember I talked about this and if you're using another ESP, contact them. If you're using eye contact, you can talk to us. You wanna avoid traps and blacklists. Uh, this is where you're sending people emails that don't want your emails. In other words, don't buy lists. If you buy a list, a lot of those email addresses are gonna be bad and it's going to bounce and it's going to hurt you. Also, there's something called a spam trap. Let's say you send an email address from AOL. I don't know who uses AOL anymore. Actually, I do. Um, and that email address doesn't exist anymore. AOL might have turned that into a spam trap. And if you send to it, you'll get in trouble. You'll get put on a blacklist. And most of your emails will go to spam. Then there's technical items that you want to set up called SPF, DCAM, and DMAR. I'm going to get into that on the next slide. And then, again, quality content that's of value so people see the value in your emails and they're engaging with them. 
SPF stands for Sender Policy Framework. Eye Contact does this automatically. If you're using someone else, check with them. This basically says that your provider or eye contact has permission to send your emails because your domain is abc.com, but eye contact is sending your email. That could be considered phishing or, or us trying to impersonate you or somebody trying to impersonate you. By putting a bit of code on your website or through your provider like we do, it says eye contact has permission to send this email and a recipient server will say, great, they have permission. DKIM, Domain Keys Identified Mail, says that the email has not been altered any time in transit. It was sent from eye contact or from your server or wherever, your provider, and it was received on your recipient end, and nothing has been changed or altered, has not been injected with malware. Now, this is something you do need to set up on your hosting provider. Maybe use GoDaddy or one in one something like that. We have instructions on how to do that, or if you're using another ESP, they should be able to help you out. DMARC, Domain-Based Message Authentication, Reporting, and Conformance. That is a mouthful, <laughs> but it's one of the easiest ones. It's something, again, you set up on your hosting service and we can help you or your provider should help you. Basically says, what should we do with any emails that come from other people that do not have SPF or DCAM? And it also helps out when you're sending emails as well, because there's a lot going on when emails are sent. This these technical items are being checked, it's received by the server, and it figures out whether or not it should deliver the email, put it to spam, just drop it, and it gives reporting back so we can figure out what's going on. That's what the, D, the DMARC does. It gives us some reporting so we can figure out what's going on with those emails. I don't want you to dwell on this slide. I just want you to let you know how complex it is, and sending an email is not as simple as pressing send. You can use mailtester.com to check your SPF and DCAMs if you want to do that. But keep in mind, every time you send an email, there are good things that happen to an email and bad. Go in a chat and let me know some of the bad things that happen or negative things that happen to an email when they are sent. What are some bad things that happen to an email when they're sent or negative? Don't be shy, I'm not seeing anything yet. I'll start it off, an email bounces. You send to a bad email address, goes to spam or, or marks a spam, Laura. Yes, awesome. What are some other things? Hardly anybody ever gets the one that I want them to. Unsubscribe, that's a negative thing. Going to spam, yes, that's another one. The one people forget is ignoring your emails. Believe it or not, people that will ignore your emails hurt you. What are some good things that happen? Hopefully somebody gets this, this This is easier. This is like the easiest test you've ever had. Opened, clicked, starring, forwarding, mark is important. Then there's one called tins. See, I'm teaching you some things today you don't even know. This is not spam. If somebody goes into the spam folder and says, this is not spam, that's one of the highest forms of engagement. Click throughs, yes. All right, so you have these bad things that happen. You have these good things that happen. To me, it's kind of like a credit score, but really it's called a domain reputation. Every time you send an email, the bad things pull down your domain reputation or your credit score. Good things bring it up. Let's say for some reason, your email ends up in spam, right? It's because you have a low credit score. Now, I don't know what the number is, 60, 100, 600. You know, nobody knows what these algorithms like with Gmail or Outlook or whoever you're sending to has, but you want to keep your deliverability high. And I we already mentioned the inflators, open engagement tins, and then detractors. And here's a little bit of rule of thumb. Your complaint rate should be 0.1% or one per thousand. Unsubscribe 0.5% or five, 0.5% uh, or five per thousand. Your bounce rate about 1%. That's what you want to strive for. And folks, this is per recipient server. In other words, all your Gmail addresses should be 0.1%. All of your Yahoo should be 0.1%. You want to look at those. And if you need help, if you're you know, with or going to use iContact, we can help you. Hopefully your provider can if you're using someone else. But just know, send quality content, you know, put more deposits in your bank, then ask for the withdrawals. This way you're getting all of these positive things to happen to your email because your domain reputation follows you anywhere you go. If you have a bad experience at another platform, you come to iContact, that domain reputation will follow you over. Long gone are the days where spammers used to use one platform and then not do so well, move somewhere else and start doing well. 
most of the credit score is on your domain, not the IP addresses you send from, which is provided by, like, say, Eye Contact or another provider. Hopefully, you're still with me. We're going to go into some extra points here. We're going to step up and do some three-point shots. We're going to give you some more value. We're going to keep going. Let's go for that extra point. Let's talk about segmentation and automation. Looks like I'm doing good on time. This is awesome. Don't forget to put some questions in. If you're thinking about them, go ahead and type them in so you don't forget about them. We're going to move into some really cool features that I call the dynamic duo. They work very well together. Segmentation is a filtered view of your list. Let's say you have 100 people on a list and you go in and you've been collecting the location data, maybe city for where people are because you do events. And I would give you my location if I knew I was signing up to go to your events. You might say, hey, I want to know everyone who's on this list that lives in Raleigh, North Carolina, because I'm from Raleigh. That's why I use that example. And maybe 20 people meet that criteria. So 20 out of the 100 are on a segment. Now, I could send them an email. Segmented emails have a higher click-through rate. Could you imagine sending the right message to the right person can actually work? Stop sending to your whole list unless it's like a newsletter everybody wants. Start targeting better. Users agree that they're more likely to respond to an email favorably if it looks like it's been specifically crafted for them. Personalization, right location. If you have an event tomorrow in California, it'd be hard for me to get there because I'd have to get a flight, number one, and might not agree with my schedule. Probably will ignore that email, which does hurt you, remember? I might mark it as spam, or I might unsubscribe. All right, folks, quiz time. Bet you didn't think there was going to be a quiz. According to the Digital Marketing Association, marketers have found a blank increase in email revenue from segmented campaigns. How much of an increase in revenue do you think you can get by actually sending the right person the right email? 80%. Great guess. Thanks, JP. JP, so far, he's pretty active. I like that. Closer to 90. Let's try triple digits. 720%. Cam, I don't know if you've been to any of my other webinars where I actually use this deck. Um, based on what you answered, I'm going to say no, but you've probably been the first organic person that got close to this because it is 760%. By sending the right message to the right person, you can actually make an impact. <laughs> I can look at the rest of these. Usually I get, wow, oh my God. But yes, segmenting works, folks. There are four pillars of segmentation that I like to talk about. Demographic is where they're, uh, uh, demographic is uh, demog age, gender, income, occupation. I think actually these got mixed up. All right, demographic, age, gender, income, education, and occupation. Then we have psychographic. This is my favorite. This is their lifestyle, their values, what concerns they have, their personality, attitudes, AIO, which is activity, interest, and opinion. And you might ask me, well, how do I get that information? Because if you say to ask for an email address and a first name, I don't know about this data. Well, you can use surveys. You can ask people to go to their profile and add more information. You should be able to add custom fields to your subscriber profiles and ask them to fill it out. Hey, if you go into your profile and let us know what city you live in, we can send you better emails, more relevant emails around events that we have in your area, or if it's a specific product or something. Get creative, ask for this information. Then we have behavioral. What are people doing or not doing? Are they opening your emails? Are they not opening? Are they clicking, not clicking? Do they visit your website? What signals are people giving you, right? You want to look at that and act accordingly. And you'll see how this plays out with automation soon. And don't forget to treat your VIPs well. A lot of people look at people who don't buy, don't open, don't click, and they try to beg them to come back into the fold and convert. Don't forget about people that buy from you because they can refer you and they might make repeat purchases. And last, we have geographic. Where are they? What city are they in? What country, is, maybe you know the density of that region or something like that. You want to get the most bang for your buck. Let's talk about today's consumer. I like to call them the empowered consumer because they all have mobile devices like this. They can go hands-on to find out what they want, where they should buy something. They can uh, be smart about shopping for price. Have you ever walked into a Walmart and then looked at a product on Amazon to see if it was cheaper? I've done it. A lot of people do it. Consumers are very vocal. They are going to leave reviews. They are going to refer or not refer you. They're gonna to go to Yelp and they're gonna 
put good or bad things on your profile. You need to be careful and you need to give people the best possible interaction with you so that they are vocal in a positive manner. The empowered consumer will stay committed to you as long as you give them value, a good price, and you give them support. They're going to give you business and refer you more business as long as you treat them right. We can do business from anywhere in the world. This pandemic has shown that. I can fly down to Mexico for three weeks and work from the beach if I want to. Then I can buy products, have them shipped to my house when I return. We're global. More importantly, we're concerned. Once the pandemic hit, everybody started to worry about their health, their friends and family, their job, how much money they're making, how much gas prices are. Right now, everybody's concerned about gas prices, and it might be something they're thinking about throughout the day. Keep this in mind when you're developing your content that people are empowered. They're not just eyeballs at the end of a screen that are going to read an email and click buy. Keep that in mind. Now what? You got all this data, you got these subscribers, and you're creating beautiful emails. You need to start using marketing automation. You want to make sure that you're working smart and saving time. Marketing automation is convincing the right people to need what you provide at the right time. Nine out of 10 dentists, no, I'm sorry, that's a different uh, uh, presentation. Nine out of 10 marketers use more than one form of automation. Implementing marketing automation can lead to an average of, do you feel another quiz coming on? I'm going to save you the pain. 451% qualified leads if you work with leads not as powerful as segmentation but put segmentation and automation together you are going to start feeding the machine the machine's going to be happy you want to feed it data what's happening or not happening who's opening not opening who's on a list or on segment then you have triggers you know did they buy from me did they um do other things so let's take a look at a nurture series i told you before to send that welcome message Better yet, let's talk about a nurture series that you could trigger when people are added to a list. So we're talking about this data and these triggers. We have email uh, information such as favorite color, location, and whether or not somebody's opened or clicked in an email, say. We can go ahead and send that welcome email on day zero, right away, folks. We said that already, we covered that. Day two is gonna be an emotional appeal email where you're gonna beg them to do business with you. No. This is where you tell them about your organization, your values, maybe introduce some of your staff. And then a few days later, you send a differentiator email. This is what makes us different than other people. And then lastly, or in this series at least, you have your incentive, jab, 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 right hook. This is where you get people to buy. This is where you're a little bit more heavier on the sale. Let's look at some examples. When we come to subscribing, you can go ahead and say, hey, when somebody's added to this list, I wanna send them an email right away. And then I want to check in a few days later and when it did not open that email, I can resend the first email. And then what you can also do is anyone else, you can go to the next series. Basically, you can have these checks and balances along the way to see if somebody opened or clicked or not and react accordingly. And these are examples in eye contact, but other platforms act very similarly. Maybe you have a specific date. Maybe this is something where you're having a conference, trade show, or a webinar. 10 days before, you can send an email. Five days before, you can see who did not register, and then you can send them a reminder email and send people who registered an email saying, we're looking forward to seeing you. Three days before, again, reminder, get people to subscribe. And then one day after, you can say, thank you. Here's what I promised you, et cetera. Segment qualification means if somebody meets the criteria of a segment of, say, non-opener, uh, somebody hasn't opened my email in the last six months. Let's go ahead and send them an email of, are we breaking up? Then you're going to send them a series of other emails. Don't be a ghost. Here are the divorce papers along the way. But you're checking to see if they've opened the previous one, the previous two, the previous three. Then you can remove them from your list. And it's important to do that, folks, because you want to make sure your deliverability is good. Custom date would be something like an expiration date or a subscription date. Hey, your subscription's coming up for new renewal in the next 30 days, seven days, one day. Again, along the way, you could check to see if they've actually renewed or resubscribed. Great example there. The best use, in my opinion, for automation is going to be staying clean as a whistle. That means using good list hygiene removing inactive subscribers to improve your email deliverability because I told you about that domain reputation. So you want to look at non-openers, right? Well, remember folks, shift happens. And for the first time in 40 years, something significant has happened with email marketing. Let's talk about that. Do you have an Apple device? You probably do or know someone who does. 
Apple implement, implemented something in their recent operating system on all their devices, where if you use their built-in email uh, platform or their, their, their app, you're going to count as an open right now. If you sent me an email and I didn't even unlock my phone or open it, I'm going to count as an open. They're doing that to protect your privacy. They're also going to hide your location or your IP address. Marketers were all up in arms and they were all freaking out when this was announced before it launched, but things happen. People want privacy. People want things for free, but they also want to respect, have people respect their privacy. So you might think sending that email, with that awesome subject line is going to get that open. They're going to click through and they're going to buy from you, right? Open rates are important. 20%, 50%, 90%. Shouldn't think about opens anymore. Should you think about clicks? If somebody clicks, that means they engaged. And Apple can't hide that. Yeah, it's a good form of engagement. Maybe that's what you want to look to is that. But don't think of one item like a click or your opens as your North Star. Look at the whole galaxy. Look at everything that's going on. Here's an example. Here's two emails. Version A had a 20% open rate, 0.6% click-through rate. Version B had a 14% open rate, 0.4% click-through rate. Which one do you think did better? Which one do you think was, was more effective? At least get one answer here, and I'm close to the end. I want to get some time for Q&A. So A, version A with the higher open rate. Let, let's just go through here. So really, if you're looking at your conversions and how much you're making from email, which you could do with Google Analytics, you'll see that version B one. one. This made up fictional marketer sent the right message to the right person at the right time, had a lower open rate, but had higher conversions or average order value. That's why you need to think differently about your marketing. Now back to our regularly scheduled program of list hygiene. It's a good opportunity to reintroduce yourself to stagnant users. Uh, it helps increase your engagement and gives you those good KPIs. It's five times cheaper to bring back a customer than get a new one. You lose 25% of your list every year regardless, so you might as well clean out the rest. And it's a good chance to let people decide what they want, like we did earlier, or, or how often they want to hear from you. Why bother? Majority of people, 43% of Gmail subscribers, click the spam button rather than unsubscribing. So if they're checked out or if your value is not there your good content's not there they're going to hit spam how often should you clean your list one week every month every six weeks every year or not at all hopefully I said nobody said never or not at all really think about it if you send weekly or if you send monthly because it depends on that if you send weekly do it every six months at least and if you send monthly do it every 12 months let's break down a journey really quick Send message one, we miss you. We want you to come back and we want you to keep receiving emails from us. Maybe uh, give them an incentive in the second email. And then lastly, you know, is this goodbye? Hey, this is the last email you're gonna receive from us and we are going to remove you. And this is similar, this example, what I showed you earlier with the open, but this is based on clicks, which is what I advise you to do. Everyone whose last click date is not within the last six months. Are we breaking up? And then again, you're checking along the way. See if anybody clicked. Give them a reason to click in these email folks so you can measure it effectively. So that's how you would do your list hygiene is based on clicks and not opens. JetBlue does a great job here with um, breaking up is hard to do. I love the Band-Aid. Um, I love the white space here. You know, playing with the idea of breaking up. They're saying, we know you get a lot of emails. We don't want to keep your inbox full. And they understand what's going on as a recipient. Type form, very similar. Notice the inactivity asking them questions directly to get that FOMO and get people to engage. And they have only one CTA in this email. Really love these two examples. And hopefully when you get the slide deck, you can look at these and maybe copy them a little bit. So I just threw a whole bunch of stuff at you and you might feel like you're new to this team that has the MVP of email marketing and it's time to study the playbook. Hopefully you're gonna take away something solid like a trophy. You never know, stay tuned. Let's talk about the key takeaways because you probably heard blah, 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 blah. Hank said this, Hank said that. I don't really know what's going on. My head's spimming. Start off right by growing your list, welcoming your new subscribers and sending the right content to the right person. Make sure your emails are delivered by setting up authentication and following good list hygiene practices, cleaning your lists. And go for the extra point by using segmentation, automation, and again, I'm gonna reiterate list hygiene. You can be an MVP on a winning team. MVPs get trophies, right? Well, 
I'm here to officially induct you into the eye contact email marketing hall of fame. And I'm going to dub you an eye contact email marketing expert, tap on the shoulder, tap on the shoulder. You should be proud of yourself, especially if you didn't win anything or you have not gotten an award in the past. I don't know if you said that in the chat, but some people said they did. So let's talk about getting that subject line guide by using this QR code or reaching out to me, however you want carrier pigeon, social media, webinars at icontact.com or just scan this QR code. It'll also be in the, the slide deck. I want to send you that guide. I also want to send you your, your trophy, your medal. You'll be added to a, 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 an email I send out once per month with tips, tricks about email marketing. I might talk about iContact a little bit, what we're doing and how we can help, but mostly it's just value for you. Jab, 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 right hook, right? And you can unsubscribe at any time. Steal the medal and unsubscribe. But if you want to stay, that's fine. And with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Heather so we can answer those intriguing questions you have. All righty. All right, so our first question is from Valerie. So she's saying, I notice more and more companies are using high filtering software to stop spam. Therefore, more and more emails are not making it through to the recipient. This is becoming a big issue. And what is the new pr protocol for sending emails in this high security environment? My asterisk is going to be like .edu and .gov and .mil, military domains. They're very hard at filtering. That's so hard to get around. You have to physically reach out and get whitelisted. So that's just always going to be a problem in this industry. Everyone else really comes down to those authentication items I spoke about and your domain reputation. Really, if you have the, the authentication set up and you have a high credit score domain reputation, you should be okay or work on improving it. All right, our next question is from Joseph. Joseph services higher end clients and has forms and white pages on the site, but he isn't getting the signups that he wants. I would say somebody, I don't know what you do, but I might have some ideas of some things you could be doing. You need to be creating content, putting content out so that people start consuming that valuable content and they want more of it. And that's where you get people to subscribe. Subscribe to get tips and tricks, information, watch my videos, be alerted when, all those kind of things. A lot of people use like TikTok and Instagram to grow their list or Twitter as well. Uh, probably be best to reach out to me and talk about a strategy for what you're trying to do without knowing the specifics. But yeah, what you need to do is like, if you're an insurance agent, you would put information that would help people not necessarily pick and choose insurance, but State Farm does a great job of sending me information about how to keep my car in top running shape, how to protect my home from theft and burglary or from hail. That's very valuable to me. And even if I didn't use State Farm, it'd be even more valuable because then I know what to look for and ask for when I start looking for insurance. Alrighty, next question is from William. He asks, how do I grow a subscription from zero? start off with sign up forms and trying to get people on your list set up that welcome message you can ask people to follow you on social media or if you don't have social media start using that but you need to put yourself out there and link back to those sign up forms and don't just say sign up for my newsletter on your sign up form. you really want to tell people why they should sign up maybe have a video above your sign up form and talk to people about the awesome things that they're going to get uh, it's easy and hard <laughs> to grow an email list and there's no magic bullet. It does take work, but email subscribers have the highest ROI of any platform. Great. And John Gallagher asks, how do you, um, how does your recommendations change for B2B? It can change significantly, especially B2B. There's something called a lack of a feedback loop with Gmail. With Yahoo, we know what's happening with the email. If it was bouncing, mark, if it was marked as an, I'm not sorry, if it was open, click, et cetera, and how many complaints. Sometimes private domains don't provide that information. It's like sending to a black hole. But what you can do is just do some reporting around who's opening and clicking and not clicking. In other words, if you have 50 people from one domain uh, in an organization, you notice no one's opening, then you know you're not getting into the inbox probably. And there's some things you might be able to do to fix that. 
But if two or three are opening, you know you're getting into the inbox, it's just being ignored, and you need to change your, your messaging. Um, B2B, um, what is it? I think it used to be seven touches before somebody buys, now it's 12. So that's why those nurturing automation series are very important, but you need to make sure you're on point and giving these B2B people what they want, because the majority of them are people that are working, they work for a business, time is of the essence. You want to, they get into their inbox and get out. So you need to make sure you're using really good subject lines to get open and follow that up with great content. All right, and one more question from Robin. How do we know if DMARC is on our email sending through eye contact? What needs to be on our server? Right, if you're with eye contact, reach out to our support team. They're very helpful. They are going to make sure that your DKIM and DMARC is set up. And if not, they can provide instructions on how to get that set up. Sometimes it's a little bit hard if you're using some weird hosting that we don't know of, but the majority of them, uh, we can figure that out. And sometimes I'm willing to hop on a call with a client to help them figure it out. But Google, like check my DMARC, check my DKIM, uh, those tools will help you check. You could do that on your own or we can help you. All righty. And that's all we have for today. Um, if your questions didn't get answered or you come up with any in the future, um, you can always email us at support at MainStreetROI.com. And I just want to thank you all so much for joining us today for our webinar and a special thanks to Hank for such great information. Um, right, Heather, really, really quick. Hey, folks, mm -hmm. if, if you want to send uh, tag eye contact in a social media post uh, and then send an email to webinars at eye contact to verify that, what I can do is send you an eye contact sticker to put on anything you want. I have a lot of these to give away, so I just try to mention it whenever I can. I really like the stickers, but maybe it's not you. Cool. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and just a quick reminder, we'll be sending out the replay video of the webinar and the PDF of the slides. So make sure you look out for that in your email. All right, we look forward to seeing everyone again in our next marketing webinar. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Thank you.